welcome back to this special edition continuing of Truck Tech, where we are looking at both natural gas and the Cummins X15N, which is the new player and arguably the game changer in what's happening with natural gas. This engine is just recently in production. We are fortunate that we're coming to you from the Cummins engine plant here in Jamestown, New York. I'm joined today by Sean Rico, who is the plant manager here, and Sean, great to see hey, you. good afternoon, it's, Alan. Thanks, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Yeah, you know what has been, this is like home base for you. Not only are you a Pennsylvania native, yep. uh, born and raised, Penn State graduate, we love the wrestling program there. <laughs> uh, I would say, though, that, you know, your time here, 22 years, is it? That That's right. Been here? That's right. And, uh, you know, a little, little detour, but, but really, you've, you've been here the whole time. Now you run the place. You've got 1,400 employees that you're in charge of. And you've also got a pretty exciting product uh, coming in this particular engine. We're really excited about this product. One thing I want, do want to say is I don't just run the place. I have a fantastic team here at the Jamestown Engine Plant that builds these wonderful engines. I get you. Yeah, I feel you. So when we talk about the X-15, that engine, the X-15 diesel, is the major engine that every automaker takes. Yes. Right now, you have in market a 12-liter ga natural gas engine. It'll be around for a little while longer, but this is going to be, I mentioned it as a game changer. It is. How is that? Okay, exactly. So, so you mentioned one out of every three Class 8 trucks has the X-15 engine in it today. So we do know a lot about the X-15. The ISX-12 natural gas has been around for about a decade or so. We've been learning a lot about that engine in those platforms, so putting it into Class 8 trucks. Um, we do know that some of our customers are looking for something a little bit more, right? Something a little bit bigger than the 12 liter. The 15 liter fills that void. Um, it'll have a better torque curve to it, a better power curve, and just better performing for those folks that desire a larger size engine. Well, one of the things that happens with the X15 is it opens up a bunch of new markets that honestly, the 12 liter can't really serve effectively. Uh, big hills in Colorado, I think you mentioned that you've tested this in, in Colorado in terms of you know, what, what it can do, and can it actually, I guess, be a, a decent equivalent in a way, in terms of power and torque? A absolutely, a lot of our customers that have been trying this engine do say it has equivalency to our diesel product. Um, as you mentioned, we've tested it out at Loveland Pass, which is about 12,000 feet, um, pulling heavy loads up over that area. So this has been tried and true, and we've done about 1.5 million miles worth of testing on these similar engines here in the U.S. to make sure that's what our customers need. Well, a little bit of history. This engine actually debuted in China. You've got billions of miles on the X-15N in, in China. It comes here, obviously, you've got to do some, some changes you know, for this market. And I, you can maybe take us through that briefly. But I think the idea, though, is that now you've got something that you can go to a fleet and say, OK, maybe you didn't want to try natural gas before for the reasons we mentioned. But now you've got something that will meet those needs. Is, is that? sort of how you think about this? Yeah, no, that, that's exactly how I'm looking at this engine. We've had to sell the ISX-12 into applications where folks wanted a 15 liter. This is a 15 liter, performs exactly like a 15 liter diesel engine. Um, you had mentioned that it was a base engine that was in China, so the general architecture has been used in China for about 3.5 billion miles. So we got a lot of testing on the engine, but this is custom built for the U.S. market, so emissions, as well as the standards of what, of what our trucking fleets require here in the U.S. This engine is specifically built, but it has tried and true components that have a lot of worldwide testing on them. So Sean, we talked about sort of the bigger pie that this fits, but there's really numbers behind that. You've got how many fleets now testing this? Yeah, we have about um, 16 fleets that are already testing these engines. Um, that are out in the field and they're testing them to the durability standards and they're saying that it's performing exactly like diesel engines and are excited about the way it's performing. You also have though, some of those are new to the whole natural gas idea, right? Yeah, yeah, actually we already have about 40 leading fleets that have placed orders for trucks with this uh, X15N engine in it. And in those, about 30% of those fleets have not used natural gas previously. So we're already seeing that some fleets that haven't adopted natural gas before in the past are early adopters of the X-15N. Great. Right. Uh, you, you just started production with this recently, you know, regular production. You're doing, I think you said one to five a day. 
that's not a big number, but you're looking for much more than that, right? That, that's correct, yeah. We're starting to build this in really small volumes. Uh, we have one OEM right now that will be placing them into their vehicle, so it will be going into the Packard chassis. Mm -hmm. In a little while from now, there'll be other OEMs that will be adopting this exact same engine. So you are correct. Today we're building about one to five a shift. Um, in the future, I'd expect this to be somewhere around where our ISX-12 natural gas is, which can be anywhere between 20 to 40 a shift. Right. Or well, more. Every engine that's line set here at the Jamestown engine plant already has an end customer in mind, and we build it for that end customer right well, from the beginning of the block being set on the line to the final valve cover to the paint that's put on the end. So, Sean, you know, some of the industry analysts are looking at maybe 20% penetration for this kind of engine. How are you situated here at Jamestown to address that kind of upper limits of demand? Yeah, excellent question. The line we have this integrated, we have two lines here at the Jamestown engine plant. We have a high volume assembly line and a lower volume assembly line. Uh, we've chosen to integrate this on our lower volume assembly line at this current moment, which has flexibility up to, I would say, 25 to 30% more than what we're projecting that we need to build now. If this has a larger market penetration, then I can also build it on my secondary line, which is my high efficiency line as well. So that opens up endless possibilities for how many of these engines that I can produce here at the plant. If, if you were to look at the X12 and then look at this, this is a, um, a slightly bigger engine than the X12. So um, you just take everything and you make it just a little bit bigger. Um, you look at some of the components on there, they're designed almost the same way. They fit together and they build almost the same way as well. So I'm really excited to have this engine in here because it complements the X12 that we currently have very well. This is actually lighter, I think you told me, than the X12 by at least a couple hundred pounds? Yeah, yeah, so, so one of the big parts of this is it has structure where it needs to and it doesn't have structure where it's not part of the durability requirements. So this engine here is lighter than our current ISX-12 natural gas variation. Not even including the light. So, so the, weight, the weight of the engine is more, is more vehicle weight that the customers can put in the back, right? They're, they're grossed out at 80,000 pounds. If this engine weighs 200 pounds lighter than the current engine that they have, that's 200 pounds more of goods that they can put in the back yep. to haul. Yep. Um, that is not the difference between the fuel economy. But some early tests with, with fleets show that this engine have, has up to about a 10% fuel economy gain over our current ISX-12 natural gas engine. That so not be, only are we get a bigger engine, but it's more efficient. Well, that's a huge selling point, especially as we get into EPA 27. All the engines, this engine, every engine is going to cost more. It's just the fact of life, right? I mean, you know, when you get a bigger engine, you pay more than you pay for a, a smaller engine. Yep. That only stands to reason. The idea around this engine, though, at this point, and hearing, I guess he really was a colleague of yours, Jose Sempero, talk about it, he sees maybe a 10% penetration, whereas natural gas today might be one or 2%. Do you subscribe to that? I, I absolutely do. So, so the 10% number is, is probably pretty accurate. However, this is a bigger engine than what we currently have for natural gas. So it'll fit a market that we haven't had before. Um, also, the, just the fuel of the natural gas is lower carbon emissions, and a lot of our customers are going towards decarbonization. This is an engine that will help our customers achieve that with the current infrastructure that's available in the U.S. So it brings a lot of advantages over what we currently have. So I can absolutely see this market growing. This may not be in your wheelhouse, but I'll ask it anyway about return on investment. You know, if you're running, say, it, you know, and, and the, a lot of it is about RNG, you know, mm -hmm. renewable natural gas, versus petroleum-based natural gas. Hmm? You, you still have, you know, you kind of get that piece for free in a way, yeah. but you still have the efficiency of, of an engine that's just, it, it just does more, bigger, but it does more. That's, that's right. That's like an Olympic athlete, and Olympics aren't that far in our rearview mirror, <laughs> but right. you, know, you know, they're bigger and they're, and they're stronger. I, I guess I would just say that, you know, at this point, from an order standpoint, I understand it's, it's early days. You don't yeah. have more than, I think you said a handful that's of right. orders. But, but you would expect them to start to grow here soon. I, I do expect it to grow. You're, you're, you're interesting, you mentioned RNG. I do know that we have a field test customer right now that's in dairy mm -hmm. that's actually using RNG from the cows to power the vehicles, to haul the milk and the dairy around and everything. So it is very efficient for customers like those. And so something like that can absolutely grow. And that's the 300% below standard you know, dairy is like the best, uh, you know, source, if you will, uh, for RNG. Obviously, methane captures another. Right. 
But, uh, but anyway, so, so Sean, I, I think this is, you know, a, a terrific opportunity. Thanks for having us in the, in the plant. Oh, you're welcome. To see this, and, uh, and, and thanks for being part of the special edition of Truck Tech. Yeah, I'm excited to have you here. Right. Thank you very much for coming. You bet. You bet. So, first time we've seen it without the rest of it underneath, but looking, <laughs> at, the, uh, looking at the heads anyway for, for the uh, X15N, right. getting a lot of attention now. You're in production, albeit early. But my goodness, I mean, this thing is, if it's not catching on by storm, it's certainly catching on. We yeah. know that. Yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, it's a pleasure to be here and a pleasure to be talking. Generated so much interest in the industry that it's unbelievable. We are super excited and happy with it. Um, I mean, if you can we remember when this launched in Asia. We remember talking at the time. It was the tail end of, the, of, of a joint venture you had. But, you know, the talk was, well, if we get interest here in in the US, then we'll bring it here. And right. sure enough, yeah. here we are. Yeah, and I think it is the right time to bring that engine in. And, and we've been debating this for a while to say what's the right timing as well. And, um, you know, we've, we've probably got over 40,000 installations globally on this platform. Now, let me get these numbers right. Give me, give me an A or, or an F. 500 horsepower, 1,850 pound-feet of torque. That's now threat. you're right there in diesel territory anyway. I mean, certainly people come and go right. around there. But, but the idea being that, you know, you've got something that you're able to put up against a diesel. And I know you make plenty of those, I'm aware. Yeah. But you've got, you've got something you can say, look, you can look at natural gas and you don't have to hear your drivers complain about right. lack of torque and, right. you know, underpower. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's the truth, and that's why we've done, and the, the helm platform that you see here, which is, uh, which is displayed here, is that the, the, anything that's below the head gasket is common to all the architectures. Sure. And then anything that's above the head gasket is unique to that kind of fuel type. So helm kind of loosely stands that it's, it's high efficiency, um, low emissions, and multiple fuels for us. And the first of that platform is actually the natural gas platform, which is coming out. We then follow it with a diesel platform, which is going to be capable of the 2027 regulations. And then we'll have the hydrogen engine coming in a little later. But I think that's the uniqueness of this to say that we wanted a product which would be capable of that kind of fuel type. And we know that it's, it, it's going to get more and more uh, messier in terms of before it gets to one type of fuel type. And then with the decarbonization side of it, we wanted to make sure that the customer experience was good. In our ages and ages of experience with the fuels type in, in natural gas especially has taught us to say what we needed to do differently, both on the engine side of it, both on the component side of it, and some of the other things. And so I think that's the reason why we've, we've been able to maintain and get an engine out which kind of delivers and works like a diesel product. And, and, and the testimony of that is actually our customers. And we've had customers who've come back and told us to say, Oh, it drives like a diesel, and which is that's what you want to hear, isn't it? Feedback. Yeah, that's what you want to and get. That's what we've been striving for. Yeah. Now, the thing that really makes it go, literally go, is the potential for renewable natural gas, right? I mean, that that's right. what you really want uh, to be running in this. Certainly, you know, there's other forms of natural gas that work. Yeah. But the idea of RNG now, you're getting down to that net zero carbon, uh, you know, plateau, and uh, you know, of course, the the, the NOx issue comes into effect for the phase three greenhouse gas right. in 27. But from an emissions profile, this has got to be uh, something that, you know, is going to kind of lead the pack. And RNG is a clean fuel. I mean, the carbon intensity score of that one is negative from a well to wheel standpoint. Um, but it, even if people don't use RNG and continue to use CNG as well, there is a 20% reduction in the carbon footprint for them moving from diesel to natural gas and then you start using a blend of natural gas and renewable gas and then you go right to the full spectrum to say that i want the good stuff which is renewable natural gas and it it, it is a it, it's an excellent way to get to the decarbonization journey and i always tell people that you know don't uh, don't wait it's here today right you can make an impact today and we are concerned about the environment and it is a it is a problem today and decarbonization is not going to be easy so well, this destination is zero, pretty. Come on, that's that's one of your one right. of your rallying cries. Right. You know, it's interesting when you talk RNG though. You're talking about something that is plentiful. There's more of it coming. You know, right. we talked we've talked with clean energy about that and the idea that you know we could be seeing a doubling of RNG. We have you know potential for I don't know 40 billion gallons. That's right. of course based on the word cows, I think. But and, and a few yeah. other things. But but the idea being that you know there's plenty of it out there. 
you can make this work with this engine. Right. And obviously it's something that, you know, you want to see happen again, towards your goal, right? right? Yeah. Uh, you know, of, of getting to destination uh, zero. Yeah, and I think again, I mean, there are various estimates that are available on what RNG is available today, how much is going in the transportation segment, right. and then how is it going to grow? I think there's a, there's a lot of new RNG plants that are coming up, I think about 200, 250 are already in production, there's another about 100 or so coming online. So there's going to be plenty of RNG to come. It's people analysts and some of them estimate that about 10 to 12% of the heavy duty truck market could actually move to RNG with how much it's coming online, which is a really good news because I mean that helps decarbonize the environment and it is moving the needle in the right direction that almost the entire industry is trying to. The, the question really around this engine, I think is, you know, obviously adoption. Is it a transition uh, as part of uh, Destination Zero or do you see this having a permanent impact along the way? I mean, there's obviously a large ecosystem that goes around this, right. in addition, just as there is for anything else. Um, do you see this as transition, or do you see this as a permanence kind of thing? I, I think it's gonna depend on a lot of factors, and it's hard to look at a crystal ball and predict today what's gonna happen. Um, certainly, there are multiple fuel types that are going to exist in the next few years. I mean, certainly till the end of the decade, Diesel's going to remain. Diesel's going to have a long tail as well. I think natural gas is becoming very, very befitting to the heavy-duty trucking industry. And as infrastructure develops on the other fuel types, as the technology develops on the other fuel types, I think RNG is here to stay for a while. It's interesting, too, because, you know, almost all of the natural gas in California, which doesn't really care much for, for fuels as a rule, they like electric, right, uh, is almost all RNG, right? That, that across the country, almost 80% RNG. Correct. Maybe all that doesn't go to transportation, as you mentioned. But the idea being that there is uh, plenty of it. Do you see on a regulatory side, I know this isn't your space exactly, but do you see on a regulatory side where this could, in fact, begin to sway some people? It's, um, it's hard to talk about regulations. I mean, the only thing that I would say, and it's not, uh, it might not be the, quite the answer that you're looking at, but um, again, from a common standpoint, we believe that technologies exist. Whatever the regulations gets laid out, uh, we would like to make sure that all, we've got the right technology from a right application standpoint. But whatever we present to the market, we want to make sure that it's compliant, it meets the regulation, and it meets what it is. The trucking industry in general has a lot of power. So the adoption of the engine and how well they love it, how well they receive it, who knows what might happen in terms of being able to sway or influence by people saying that if the trucking industry wants this, it's a good solution, it's economical, it gets the benefit. One of the best things about this job, honestly, is getting to go into people's plants and seeing the stuff that they're doing on the line and that kind of thing. So we really thank Cummins for inviting us into Jamestown to spend some time here. We will be continuing this special series next with Sarah Abernethy, from Kenworth, Kenworth being the first customer for the X15N, and you will see her in just a few weeks. Hope you'll come back for that. Thanks for watching.